Welcome back. It's time again for WoW's Health Checkup. This time it's more interesting though. So, season four, it's a season of these greatest hits, dungeons, fated raids, and experimentation. All with a pretty damn dramatic reduction in the amount of just shitty busy work that's needed. It's also a season that, at least per the metric of something to do, did remove the usual mammoth content drought that WoW tends to have at the end of an expansion. Delivered by a pretty small group, season four basically represents the efforts of a somewhat more player-centric, feedback responsive team too. So, did it work? Well, we love diving into this data. Hit the description, by the way, for the, you know, full dive in what the data actually is and how it's sourced. And diving into the data is exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to find out, did this experiment solve the content drought per the numbers? Did it retain more players than usual, prevent raid population fall off? What did not work and what did work? like today's sponsor. Buyraycon.com forward slash Bellular, where you'll get 15% off your first purchase, plus 20 bucks off the gaming earbuds, or 10 bucks off the gaming headset. And yes, I said gaming. Raycon are moving in with the wireless gaming earbuds and headphones. Both of these are compact, portable, and great for gaming on all of your devices. They're low latency and they come with three different sound profiles. You've got pure, balanced, and bass. For me personally, I prefer pure. Now these pair seamlessly with all major platforms with a click of a button. Personally, I've really enjoyed the earbuds. I love gaming with wireless buds because uh, they're, they're comfy. Um, I, I like them. Uh, wires also suck, so big win. Now, five gel tips means that you will get a perfect, comfortable fit that offers you really great passive sound isolation. They've got a total of 31 hours battery, intuitive touch controls, and of course, they're obviously great for more than just gaming. Going around, listening to podcasts, I read like Ali Abdal's one, I've been listening to that recently. Um, so they're great for that, great for gaming, and you can check out both of these great products with the link down in the description box buyraycon.com forward slash Bellular. You'll get 15% off your Raycon purchase, plus 20 bucks off the gaming earbuds or 10 bucks off the gaming headphones. Raids then, okay. Normal is pretty important to talk about and it's also the minimum needed to get the slime cat. And what we see is kind of fascinating. So here's the big graph of first versus last boss guild kills within the first six weeks of the seasons. Expansion spikes obviously happen, and then it falls off from tier to tier, but more so in Shadowlands than any other expansion. Faded then is fascinating, experiencing a massive 57% drop from Sepulchre, and continuing the pretty frightening trend of normal mode guild participation measured via first boss kills, more than halving every tier this expansion. So within the first six weeks, 41,266 did Nathria, 5,513 average on Faded, which is a bit of an oof, but is it really all an oof? Because drop-off is also a problem, right? Because if somebody kills boss one, but obviously doesn't finish the raid, then they didn't really complete their goal. Did they stop raiding? Did they quit? Did their guild disband? Well, here's where season four is a bit happier. Now, I'm going to use the faded average, right? Where, while only 5,513 first boss kills tended to happen, 5,129 last boss kills happened. So, all the raids are actually around 90 to 95 percent. And that is really high. Nathria was 72, Sanctum was 72, and Sepulchre was only 46. You've essentially seen that metric double it's not perfectly apples to apples, but you get the point. Now, as for Sepulchre, of course, that struggled with all its famous balance issues. It had a few group killing bosses. It needed constant nerfs from Blizzard, as did, of course, the other modes. Now, what's interesting to me is that 6,023 final boss guild kills were listed for Sepulchre of the first ones in season three. And that is actually slightly above fated normal first boss kills average. Now, this is kind of good. I think it suggests the players who stuck around through season three were generally retained at a higher than normal rate, and that is good news. Now, of course, we're somewhat assuming that a guild that kills Denathrius will also kill Sylvanas, hence using the averages, not the sum of all three. I think the sum of all three isn't, well, honestly, neither are perfectly representative, but we've got to work with, well, what we have. That being said, 
There's not a large fall off from Fated Raid to Fated Raid. And I think that does at least show that people who stuck around, you know, they did so for a few weeks to do a bunch of that content. So I think this is actually a really big result for Blizzard. But do you know what's also odd? Heroic numbers. Because in a way they're similar, and they're different, they're also larger. Now, while normal was needed for the slime cat, what we're able to track here is guild kills. So perhaps a lot of those normals were done in pugs via the pre-made finder, and if so, I don't think they would have been showing up in our data set, right? So that disclaimer said, let's talk about heroic, which will generally have a lot more kills. So while only 978 kills killed season three Zoval on heroic in the first six weeks, an average of 4,818 last boss kills were recorded on heroic fated with 7,964 first boss kills. Now, the clear percentages are, of course, much lower than normal. It is harder content after all, 60.5% on average. And the thing is, that's triple Nathria, and it's a lot higher than, than the Sanctum in the same time span. That is actually pretty cool. Sepulchre, of course, looks the way that it looks because of Zoval's somewhat shorter availability and tuning issues that we've, of course, went into in detail before. Now, comparing first boss kills, we see a 23% decline from the past tier, which is so much smaller than the 57% decline that we saw on normal, and it's smaller than what has generally been seen in heroic mode this expansion. So once again, yeah, this is good news. And if you want to laugh, the last boss kill rate within the first six weeks, it increased by 392% which of course is just funny. It says more about Zoval than it does about Faded. But overall, I do think this stuff is noteworthy because the amount of people who completed, say, Zoval within the first uh, six weeks in season three, and then these Faded bosses in season four, regardless of the specific reasons, that number does actually represent guild players who achieved their goal within six weeks. So surely then, Faded may represent a more satisfied player base. Now, when we go to Mythic, it's also promising. Participation, as shown by first boss kills, has remained flat, and that normally does not happen. Now, that said, yeah, it makes sense that the game's most invested players would be the most likely to stick around. Plus, the deterministic gearing offered by the dinars and the upgrade tokens has likely boosted enjoyment too. Uh, clear rates are still low because it is hard content after all, but if you want to laugh, they are 1750% higher than Sepulchre. Which again, because Sepulchre was a weird outlier, I sort of bring up as a joke, but these numbers are significantly higher than Nathria and Sanctum. Now, with Mythic being harder, we should definitely expect slower progress within two uh, fated cycles, which is six weeks. That is what we're seeing in the data. And overall, I'm going to call this, well, I'm going to call it a win. But you might be thinking then, what about dungeons? Because they also got a lot of love. All right, dungeons. So a quick thing in data. We had two sources. There's best keystone and keyscore.me. Now we used best keystone for a long, long time, but unfortunately it died for a bit. So now we're using keyscore.me. But you may notice it's producing these massive numbers in the millions whereas you had smaller numbers on the other data source, it actually turns out that Keyscore counts character runs, not total group runs. So when you divide the best or the Keyscore.me stuff by five, it actually brings its historical numbers more in line with uh, best Keystone. So the upshot actually is that we've got pretty damn good Mythic Plus data. So what story does it tell? In short, it's pretty fucking good. Now, sadly, week one of season three has broken data on our source, but all the other weeks in this sample uh, does work, and we're using the first eight weeks. So we can make a comparison, and it's a bloody interesting one, where compared to season two and season three, season four actually has the strongest start, rather dramatically so, with week two of season four being over double that of week two season three, and still much higher than season two. I mean, wow, the, the drop off from uh, that big large spike uh, absolutely is there in season four. I think obviously there's a lot of novelty there, so people would have piled in and people would have been filtered out pretty quick. 
And by week six, you actually see that all three seasons are at around the same level of performance. But that being said, season three may have actually had artificially inflated numbers, ish. And there's a few reasons for that. So number one, you could get tier loot from the Great Vault. So much like how Mythic Plus participation skyrocketed in Season 4 of Battle for Azeroth because of Corrupted gear, I think, again, because Tyr could appear in the Great Vault, you were seeing a lot of people want to fill up their vault, even if they weren't really a Mythic Plus player. And also, there were 10 dungeons in the pool, and that did come along with a higher Keystone Master requirement, and that does mean that in Season 3, people were incentivized to uh, run more dungeons. Whereas, of course, if you look at Season 4, it is 8 dungeons instead of 10. Now, taking those factors that boost Season 3 into account, if we were to assume then that Season 3 is maybe a decent bit lower than Season 2, I think that does make sense, right? Um, I mean, you would expect people to leave during an expansion. But then you might think, why are people coming back for Season 4? Well... If we were to assume that these stats are right, and this is stuff that is like scraped from the Blizzard API, right? I, I think you can actually make sense of this. Now, I'll start with a bit of a personal anecdote. Obviously, anecdotes, you have to be very careful uh, with those, right? We don't want to go around throwing anecdata. But personally, I actually had not done Karazhan Mythic Plus. I had not done Mechagon Mythic Plus. I had not done Tazavesh Mythic Plus. Nobody had done Grim Rail or Iron Dox Mythic Plus. Even if you played those dungeons back in the day, right? Even if you did Karazhan Mythic Plus, I hate to break it to you, I really do, but that was in like 2016, 27, no, 2017. Yeah, to like 2018. That's like four years ago. So I think that that will have felt novel to people, right? Certainly a lot more novel than if season four had the same, like, eight core Shadowlands dungeons plus Tazavesh. So I think that this just would have felt more new to more people and therefore it would have been more of a reason to come back. Also, I was part of the season three normal and heroic data set because my guild did Sepulchre. But only a handful of our players played in season four. I mean, we, we killed the Chuckler on, um, on, on normal, like decently early, and then we were thinking, do we go into heroic? But honestly, nobody really had the zest for the game anymore. And uh, you know, one or two of the people who kind of do help glue our team together were off doing mythic progression anyway. So we just kind of split apart. That meant that, yeah, I was there in season three for the raid data, but I am not represented in the season four raid data. But to the few of us who did come back, we did Mythic Plus. It did feel more novel, and the cross-faction stuff made the Alliance Pug experience far better. And that was an interesting thing as I went through the keyscore.me data. I was seeing numbers in Season 3 that were like 21% Alliance, 25% Alliance. Like, you are seeing numbers more like 35 37% Alliance in season four. And I think that just shows how much better of a group formation experience there now is that cross-faction has been added into the game. Of course, me and Matt got that on turbo mode because, well, I was healing and he was tanking. So overall to me, it really does not seem insane that so many people would go and check out those dungeons for the novelty. I'd also say that like, the final wing of the mega dungeons, like, doesn't, I mean, it's not super, super long, right? And I, I don't know, I like between Iron Docks and Grimrail as well, like they, those just feel like very doable dungeons. So we're overall seeing participation is up. Now, we can't really see specific player numbers. I'm sure that via the Armory API, you could find out how many people got Keystone Master this season. So I think that's probably the sort of thing we need to work out as a data source ourselves if we can get like a little bit of development work done so that we can actually store all that data as time goes on. So, you know, there could be some funny business, like you could have the same number of players, but they're just running more Mythic Plus. That could definitely be the case. But I'll definitely say that for season four, weeks four through eight, to be around the same participation of prior seasons of the game is just fantastic. Especially when you think about how this fundamentally is all, you know, 
greatest hits content rather than brand new content. How it didn't come with a new story, a new like core hook, a major new marketing beat or a new zone. And this absolutely, I think, shows the benefits of shaking up that dungeon pool. Another thing then is uncapped Valor points. That's a fairly massive change. It would mean that if you kept running dungeons, you would keep feeling rewarded and that's important. So as for my analysis on this, I've got to be real with you. I'm kind of over the moon at these numbers. This is great. I mean, it must be real. Almost every single data video we've done in the last two years has been bad news. So seeing that these faded raids are seemingly doing a good job at retaining players, that is a brilliant sign, even if those numbers are, compared to the past of the game, small. That hopefully indicates the same plan, executed better, and in a more healthy expansion, that that would yield similarly strong retention, but with a higher uh, like baseline number. As for Mythic Plus, that simple, novelty wins, uncapped VP wins, getting tier gear via the creation catalyst wins. This all too does line up with broad community feedback, which has been very positive. Now, there have been a few points of feedback, some class balance things, people wanting the dinars to be less stingy, and obviously this season having no new things for world content players. So to bring this to a conclusion, season four is a limited success. That's all it really ever could have been, right? It was stuck at the end of a dud expansion. But I want to bring up something. So here is the World of Warcraft subscriber graph. This is from back when Blizzard used to report that, and they stopped reporting that after Warlords of Draenor made all the subscribers run away. But if you look at Mists of Pandaria, you get something interesting. I mean, Mists of Pandaria was scoffed at at that BlizzCon. There was a lot of dislikes in all those videos, you know, back when YouTube showed dislikes. It just didn't seem to resonate uh, with a lot of people, and then it had some launch quirks as well. But what you actually see is that after the subs go down, they go back up again. Now Mists of Pandaria is really hailed as a fantastic expansion. And that is reflected in the data because where expansions usually get a bunch of new players, churn a load, have a big dip, and then have a big spike at the next expansion, Mists of Pandaria, it had its dip, then it actually climbed and maintained. That is super goddamn impressive. Now, I'm not saying that's what season four has done. We don't have subscriber numbers, but when I look at some of the suggested retention in the raid data set, man, that does begin to remind me of those sort of good signals that came in the missed data. So I think this has clearly generated so much more engagement than a 10 plus month long season three would have. Players got game to enjoy, developers got to experiment. It is a win-win. So then what can we get in the future? I mean, what, faded old raids as a side activity alongside current raids? Maybe a revamped time walking sort of old raid thing where the old raid gear is actually good, who knows? The more deterministic gearing they experimented with, Blizzard being willing to uncap VP and conquest a bit earlier on in a season, or just be less restrictive in general, hard to say. But the World of Warcraft dev team had to move on to Dragonflight. Those who stayed behind, though, and cracked out this patch, did a fantastic job. Just imagine if the final patch of Legion was like this. An Emerald Nightmare with proper balance. An awesome selection of raids to do. Even look at BFA. Dazara Lore was hailed as one of WoW's best raids in years. If that was available on an equivalent of Faded, then, I mean, after I killed Nazoth, yeah, I would have went back and done that especially if they fixed up the corruption gear acquisition stuff and backported it into the old content, maybe made it fully deterministic. So do you see my point? The idea of doing like a greatest hits remaster season at the end of an expansion is just wonderful. It takes where there would almost always be a content drought and it actually makes something of it. It's nice to do a data video that is not all doom and gloom. So that's good shit. And let's hope that good shit continues into the next expansion. So that's it for today's video. Thanks to our sponsor. You can check them out down below and I'll see you next time.